We'll call the meeting to order. This is the March 28, 2017 meeting of the Town Planning and Zoning Commission of the Town of Fairfield. The first item on our agenda are bills and communications, the meeting minutes from March 7th, 2017. Do I have a motion? Sorry, motion to approve. Thanks. Motion to approve by Commissioner McAleese, seconded by Commissioner Barrett's. Everybody have a copy of those? Any questions? I didn't see anything. Needs amendment. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? The minutes are adopted unanimously. Mr. Chairman, I just want to remind you about the announcement. About oh, the yeah, care. thank you very much. Um, so for any members of the public that are here for uh, the Thorpe Street application and public hearing, um, the Fairfield Citizen um, made an error and forgot to publish the second notice on that application. And so uh, by law, we're not permitted to proceed with that tonight. So we will not be going forward with that application on tonight's agenda. It's going to be rescheduled until our, to our next regular meeting, which is going to be on April 18th. And I apologize to anybody that came out for that. I, I meant to announce that first, but I forgot. Okay? So it will not be a topic whatsoever? It will not be heard whatsoever. Nothing. Mr. Chair? Uh, well, so the next item on the agenda is outdoor dining annual recertification of uh, the outdoor dining inventory. Okay, this is um, we've made a practice now of recertifying our list as you've got the oh, current in inventory. Forgive me. Yep. Yeah, that, that announcement I just made does uh, applies to all of the items on the public hearing, not just Thorpe Street. So the zoning regulation amendment uh, of the Fairfield Town Plan and Zoning Commission, the scenic road application to have Congress Street between Brett and Burr Street declared a scenic road, as well as the Thorpe Street petition for zoning uh, regulation amendment and their application will all not be going forward tonight. So um, you have in your packet the uh, current roster of outdoor dining venues. Uh, we send them an annual recertification. They're, the season has been extended uh, several years ago by this commission. It runs from April 1 through October 31st. Um, and this is just kind of our annual recounting of what's out there. We don't have any uh, recorded complaints or, or issues with any of these particular locations to report at this time. Okay. Thank you. May I have a motion? For, so I'll move we approve the entire outdoor dining inventory as found in our handout. Okay. Motion to approve uh, all of the um, uh, outdoor dining uh, on the inventory by Commissioner Barrett's. Second. Second by Commissioner Alessi. Commissioner Barrett. I just have a couple questions. I don't know. Yeah, again, we don't have any reported issues. I don't know. Maybe some other commissioners may. What? Gallup and Irv doesn't have an approval date on it. Was that approved? There's no original. It is. Is it, 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 it even on this list? It's, well, it is. It's on a list, yeah. It, it doesn't have an approval date or a square footage or anything like that. So. Um, it was. They have. Uh, I, all right. Thank you for noting that. Okay. It was, it was, they did have an outdoor dining component as part of their special permit approval okay. when it was approved. I, yep. Sitting here, I, I don't know what that okay. date and square footage was, but it was part of your overall approval. Okay. It was approved in 2013, but I think it just went into business recently, like yes. within the last year. So. And it's probably their full, full season of, of use. And then my, you know, so the same is true for local, a couple lines down. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And then the other one I have is just, I, I don't, I haven't kept up. Southport Brewing Company, um, is that something else yet, or is it? it um, it's changing to a steakhouse. I don't recall the name, but okay. it is going to be a, a the venue. I'll have to update the, the name, but they still have the right to use the, the space as the new outlet. 
Okay, well, again, I don't know of any issues about any other establishments, so I'll move to approve it. Okay. The same is true for Plan B burger on the second page. Second line on the second page is blank for Plan B. Okay. I will uh, make sure we fill those blanks in. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. I got a couple of questions. Um, what, what do we allow milk craft and beef fresh to start? I don't remember approving anything for beef fresh right there on the corner. Yeah, it was. They had a they had a, um, 150 feet towards the back. I mean that place is not in operation right now. They've they've left. Um, but They're out already? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. They've been out. And did we ever establish what was going to happen with Finn as far as the, that whole situation they have on the side of that of that building? I mean, are they just they? Removed, what did they do? Remove the they plants? have they have they got approval to have these by these like accordion glass doors there. They're when not going to be putting that up though because they, they're running a tent, aren't they? Running a tent on there? No, no. They had that. They had an overhang that they put these opening closing accordion glass doors so they can open them up okay. in the season but they not they don't go on and milk craft was originally approved as a prior as predecessor owner they're a successor um tenant to uh, there was a um a cupcake shop in there before the ice cream store was and mirror kitchen's closed Right. What's that? Mirror Kitchen? They closed? It's, yeah, well, I just saw that in the paper that they're going to, yeah. yeah. And Wilson's Barbecue, correct? That property is for sale at present, so, yeah. So are we taking them off the list or are we leaving, that, those prop are we leaving them on in case somebody comes in? Well, the, the rights to the use would go, if it's going to remain a food service use for any, for any venue that changes hands, if, if it changes names or changes ownership, they have the rights to the prior approval to continue as the same because we're proving the use, not necessarily the user. So it, that, that approval runs with the property. So if, if, if Beef Fresh, for example, which is now closed, becomes some other use that's not a food service use, then we would take it off this list. Okay. But if a food service use you know, reestablishes themselves there, they have the right to continue that, that opportunity. And then the only question I would have would be for the commission would be brick and wood which just takes up the whole sidewalk for the parking lot, which is kind of a tight sidewalk over there. So I don't know how to handle that. I'm not, Mr. Commissioner, are they, are, do we think they're taking up more than what they're allotted? They're approved for 196 square feet. Do you think like that? Maybe they're taking more of that, or is it what they're taking seems to be not working out in terms of like how the sidewalk flows? Well, it'll be 10 by 20 pretty much. So, I mean, it's just, it seems like they take up more than it could be. Yep. I, sh I would agree with you that it, that it appears that way, but yeah. they're they're kind of unique in that they've got it's tight. The sidewalk actually runs between the restaurant and the seating, right. rather than the seating being up against the restaurant right. with the sidewalk outboard of the seating. Right. So it looks, it gives the impression that they're occupying the whole sidewalk, but there there there's a five foot clear path typically to walk walk through there. So they're running food in it. That's the whole thing. Now they can't run that against the building, right? They have to keep it out the way they have it. Right? So well, that's what was. That's the way they yeah. got it through. Yeah. Do you think that's not working well? I mean, if you ever go there, you'll see. I mean, it's really tight. It's not. It's, it's difficult to move in and out of there. But I don't want to take the outside dining away from that restaurant. But it's not a good situation. It's it's tight maneuvering over there. That's all. That's what it is. There is the potential for conflict with servers coming and going, but that's not, no. you know, in my You're right. That's experience, the point. heavily pedestrian traffic yeah, they, space. Yeah, that's exactly the point. They don't have the dining up against the building. They have yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sitting on the parking lot, yeah, yeah. and you're walking behind them, and you're walking between the, the people right. we and the restaurant. That, that's mm -hmm. how it is. But there's really no way to change that around. You've got columns there and everything else on that overhang. Just grab a slice. <laughs> Just grab a slice on the way by. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we can monitor that this year. Yeah, that's fine. Right. 
Does anyone else have any other comments? Are we ready to vote? Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? All right. The uh, inventory is approved unanimously. The uh, next item is uh, from the supplemental agenda. Um, I have a, a motion to go into closed executive session make for discussion regarding pending litigation. I'll make the motion to go into closed executive session. Okay, Before motion. you do that, Mr. Chairman, just you need to make a motion to add the supplemental item. To oh, the I thought it was already. Uh, no, I'm already sorry. Done. We didn't publish it, so you need to have a like two thirds to, vote to, to do that. I'd like to make a motion to add to our agenda as 1C, closed executive session, discussion of pending litigation regarding 1537 to 1571 Stratfield Road. Motion by Commissioner Lessig. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Barris. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay. The item is added to the agenda. I make a motion to go into closed executive session at this time. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Lessig. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Barris. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay. We're in closed executive session. Well, um, go back on the record. Uh, can I have a, a motion to come out of uh, closed executive session? Make a motion to come out of closed executive session. Motion by Commissioner Lessie. Uh, second by Commissioner McAleese. Any discussion? All in favor? Please. Commissioner McAleese. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay, we're, we're back in uh, um, open executive session. Um, so uh, no decisions uh, were made uh, in closed executive session, uh, although um, there was some discussion of a, a motion. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion uh, regarding this uh, litigation uh, for the applicant to submit fully engineered revised plans for us to consider at a public hearing in order to resolve the application and in the meantime to continue with the appeal. To continue the appeal? Yes. Okay. Second. So motion by Commissioner Noonan. I thought I did. Yes. Let me do it again. Can you repeat that please? Yeah, sure. Uh, regarding this pending litigation, I move for the applicant to submit fully engineered revised plans for us to consider at a public hearing in order to resolve the application and in the, mean, in the meantime to continue the appeal. Second. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Noonan, second by Commissioner Francis. Is there any discussion uh, on the motion? Okay. Well, uh, so I, I, I agree. Uh, I think it's a, a good motion and we should support it. Um, the proposal should be um, presented to us uh, and for us to consider and the public given an opportunity to show their support or opposition. Yeah, sure. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I agree as well. I'd um, like to listen uh, to the any revised, uh, revised plan, uh, changes to the application in a public hearing, have the public be heard, either support or against it, um, but also to be able to see everything in open public as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? The motion carries unanimously. Okay. Next item is new applications to recommend a public hearing. Uh, 5151 Park Avenue, uh, special exception application to Sacred Heart University for an on-campus diner in R3 zone. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. You didn't think you were going to have to work tonight, huh? Did Jim give you a copy of the uh, application? Uh, no, we don't okay. have that one. Well, essentially, it's a uh, proposal for a special permit, a special exception application that uh, 
the Sacred Heart University for a diner. Um, the, the, the use, needless to say, is permitted accessory to the existing university. However, it does require a special exception, and that special exception process requires a public hearing. And that's why it's in front of you for a recommendation. I'll make a motion to move to public hearing, Mr. Chairman. Motion to move to public hearing. I'll by second. Commissioner Canelli, seconded by Commissioner Alessi. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Move to public hearing unanimously. This diner's co competition, you know, because Fairfield has their diner now, now Sacred Heart wants their diner as well. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, good. Good, good. Good, good. Good, good. Uh, that was a motion Jerry. by Jerry. Commissioner Canelli and seconded by Alessi. Thank you. Okay. Um, so if there's anyone here for the public hearing items, uh, the zoning reg amendment, the scenic road application, or the Thorpe Street application, those have been continued. All right, there was an issue with the publication of the second notice in the citizen, and we're not permitted to hear those tonight. So we will only be completing the old, now the old business and the compliance application uh, that's before us in, in executive session. Okay, so. Old business. First item is Tuller Road, request to 144 Tuller Road, LLC to reduce the subdivision bond from $119,667.50 to $37,375. All right, Mr. Chairman, I'm just going to briefly go over what was uh, submitted to the commission at a public hearing at our last meeting. This is a six-lot subdivision that was approved by the commission through a stipulated judgment on March 24, 2014. The bonded improvements include street pavement, drainage, concrete curbs, pontoonless ramp, and street trees. Uh, the total amount to be retained and has been reviewed by the uh, town engineering department, which we received a, a, an email from them, is basically $33,375. Uh, the work to remain to be completed is for the four home sites. Um, in addition, a portion of this amount includes funds repaired to repair any asphalt payment that would be damaged uh, when the uh, remaining when the remaining four dwellings were to construct it. Uh, none of this bonded information, and there was some discussion at the hearing about this, nothing is bonded having to do with the individual home construction. Uh, that's basically, that's a case by case basis with the building department. Uh, the bonding basically here covers uh, the road construction, drainage, and street trees. Okay. Yeah, very good, thank you. Can I have a motion? I make a motion to approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner Alessi. Second by Commissioner Noonan. Mr. Chairman, I did watch these all. Okay, very good. So Commissioner Francis is up to date, as well as Commissioner Alessi, which means that all the regular members are on this item. So thank you, uh, Mr. Devonchik. You answered the big question that was presented there about whether it had to do with the houses or the roads. And um, so I don't have any other questions. Does anybody else have any questions? Mm -hmm. Motion is to approve. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Abstentions? The uh, application is uh, granted unanimously. Next item is 100 Nippus Road, resubdivision application of Judy Cardello for two lots in an R3 zone. Again, Mr. Chairman, I will briefly go over uh, what was presented at the hearing. Uh, the parcel currently contains a single family house, driveway in a, in a lawn area. The lot is a little over 40,000 square feet of uh, land. The proposal is, is to split the lot into two lots. Lot one would retain the existing house. The existing driveway would, uh, will be modified, a stone terrace added, and a small addition to the existing house. The pro uh, it is proposed to build a new house on uh, lot two. The property is located in R3 residential zone. The minimum lot size is 20,000 square feet. Both lots would be consistent with this requirement. Public water and sewer are available. Drains report was submitted and reviewed uh, by the engineering department, and they find it, it's consistent with uh, their requirements. The sight line for the, the driveway uh, entrance to the street was discussed at the hearing, and engineering uh, did review and did report back to us, and essentially in their report, which I think you've got a copy today, the sight line provided is more than 400 feet for upgrading vehicles and 300 feet for lot one and 350 feet for lot two for downgrading vehicles. Uh, these distances exceed the minimum requirements. 
Uh, therefore, the location of the driveway entrances to the proposed lots are acceptable to the engineering department. That, Mr. Chairman, was essentially what was discussed in the hearing. Very good. Thank you. I have a motion. I make a motion to approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner Lessie. Second. Second by Commissioner <coughs> McAleese. Commissioner Lessie. Uh, no. Okay. Apart from the sight lines, I didn't see any other issues with the application. Um, it was unclear um, at the hearing whether or not there was uh, compliance, but we now have that uh, confirmed. Otherwise, I think the application complies with the regulations, and um, I think we're bound to, uh, to approve it. Does anyone else have any comments? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay. The application is approved unanimously. Next item is 226 Main Street, special exception application and coastal site plan application of Eagle Hill, <coughs> Southport School, to expand an existing school use into an existing building in the R3 zone. Again, Mr. Chairman, I will briefly go over what was presented at the, commission, at the public hearing uh, to the commission. Subject property and buildings are located at 226 Main Street, Southport. It is the former bank resident comprising approximately 3,650 square feet of floor area on uh, two floors. The proposal is to reuse this building without any modification to the exterior of the proposed for the purpose of supporting existing enrollment and activities at the adjacent Eagle Hill School. The previous use of the building included a pub, uh, People's United Bank located on the first floor and on the second floor there was a residence. The proposed reuse of the existing building will be sh to shift certain current activities located in the adjacent Eagle Hill School into the building. It will include the art and music programs and development, admissions and communication staff. As part of all these changes with the school use of the building, the enrollment and staff levels will remain consi uh, consistent, as re was reported by representatives from the school. Uh, the existing building has a driveway uh, and will provide six on-street parking spaces, which will include one handicapped space. The building is located immediately adjacent to the Eagle Hill School and will become part of the overall school. Uh, Main Street is a wide uh, two-lane town-maintained roadway, which permits uh, one travel lane each direction. The parking generally along both sides of the street, uh, south of the school and along the west side, uh, north of the school. All school activities occur on Main Street along the school, school frontage, and these activities will not be changed in the future or having to do anything with this proposed application. And Mr. Chairman, is essentially what was uh, outlined for you at the public hearing. Thank you very much. Can I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve with the condition of uh, an entrance only sign along the side of the driveway. Motion by Commissioner Lessie to approve with one condition for an entrance side entrance sign on the driveway. Second by Commissioner Noonan. Commissioner Lessie. That was a good application. Um, the neighbors were in support of it. Uh, they had nothing but nice things to say about the school. I know the entrance only sign was brought up during the hearing, and uh, that's the only condition I'd like to see placed on it. Okay. Commissioner Noonan, any idea? All right. Commissioner I Frank. particularly appreciated the neighbors coming out and their positive testimony. It was really very supportive. Yeah. Anyone else? Yep. It, it was a, it was an excellent application. I mean, it's a beautiful facility, maintaining the historic nature of the the bank, and you know the school is a um, really a staple in the community, and it's what they need at this time. So. Um, I'm, I'm happy to support the application. Any other comments? Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Application is approved unanimously. Do you have a question? I'm sorry, no. no. Okay. Next item are compliances, 1132-1138 Post Road, compliance application of Richard Hersfeld for seasonal outdoor dining in the center design district. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is the new location for Chef's Table on the Post Road. Uh, you've got a survey in your packet that shows they want to put a 6 by 25 foot long uh, patio adjacent to the side of their building. There's an asphalt walk between the, the existing asphalt walk between the building and this location. It is on a little bit of a, a slope, so they've provided a uh, kind of a cross section of how they're going to uh, accomplish this with a paved patio supported by uh, six by six timbers with a with a timber uh, 42 inch high guardrail above it, but it would be subject to all the standard uh, conditions of outdoor dining should you be fit to approve this. Yeah, I saw that. Very good. Can I have a motion? Take a vote to approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner McAleese. Second. Oh, second. Commissioner Canelli. What you? I, I don't know. I'm going to move there. along here. So really. I'm gonna, now it's uh, it's a good application. I mean, I didn't, did, did, do you have any questions? Any comments? Is, uh, is there something you saw? Uh, you no, know, nothing I saw. It's um, I mean, I, I did go to visit the site. Yeah. There wasn't anything um, odd about it or contentious. It's it is steep to the next to the adjacent parking lot, but yeah. it looks like they're putting a, a, a slight retaining wall there. The walk looks more like a service walk to get to a rear office or something at the back of the building. It didn't look like it was heavily traveled, so I'm not, not concerned about that. Um, I have to say, I, I, this has been a great business for the town of Fairfield. I loved it when they were on Post Road. I wanted to help, help them succeed, and if this little bit of a few tables helps them, I'd say let's support our local business and keep it going. Okay. Very good. See that? Commissioner Canelli, you didn't have to say it. I didn't have to say it. Government. Anybody else? Yeah. I'm, I'm right. glad that they're putting the parking, the seating on the side because there's no parking. So that's, that's great. Good. The creativity. Anyone else? Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? The compliance is approved unanimously. Oh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, I'd make a motion. We had a supplemental item to the agenda. Yes. What was that? I would like to uh, have a period of tribute to uh, Joe Devonchik, our planning director. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> motion for a tribute to Mr. Joe Devonchik. Do I hear a second? Second. Second all around. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I was hoping to have a little bit more on this I just wanted to say before you almost had 300 to, people here. This is the here perfect here. venue for wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Let me put, wait a second. Like all the camera just kind of, It's just going to go wants to be here. end into just <laughs> going to the sunset. It's a perfect <laughs> venue for my last meeting. Perfect. Um, as I said, I was hoping for a larger uh, audience. I was going to give them some brief remarks tonight prior to uh, pitching the, uh, the liquor reg tonight. but. Um, I'm, I'm going to save some of my material for Thursday night for those of you that are going to be joining us Thursday night. But remember, my kids come. It, it, I would, yes, I know. All the better. They might talk too. No, no, I don't want to. I would be remiss if we did not, uh, you know, if we did not uh, in, uh, take the opportunity to to celebrate uh, Joe tonight. Um, ask yourselves where you were on July 31st, 1984, for that was the night of Joe's first meeting, attending the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission meeting in the town of Fairfield. That was, that was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, he was appointed director uh, on October 3rd of 1985, and at the end of the week, we'll close out his tenure as the longest serving planning director in the town's history. There's something to be said for that. 33 years of longevity in that position um, is you got to get along with a lot of people. Uh, Joe served six first selectmen, 11 Planning and Zoning Commission chairs, and 66 individual commission members over the years. So just, again, I'll have more to say on Thursday, but I wanted to say for this record, and for those of you at home on Fair TV watching, I've been a part of this run for 30 years. Um, so I wanted to publicly thank Joe for being a good boss and a good friend, and wish you good health Godspeed and congratulations to you, sir.
I'll have more to say Thursday, but I, I, that needed to be said at a public meeting. Um, I have great admiration for this guy, and uh, he's a good friend more than more than just being a boss. So it's going to be different, yeah. but we'll figure it out. It's going to be different with a new sheriff in town. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I'm going to do my best. I, I can guarantee you this. I am not going to be serving as your planning director for 33 years. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. No, I appreciate that, John. I really do. And I said last week, um, I have nothing but great, favorable, great things to say about Jim. I wouldn't have been here for 33 years without his help. And I also mentioned to you before, one of the great assets of this community is... Oh, all right. I've always said this in the past. I've said it many times at, at different commission and board meetings that I've had to attend over my years. The one major uh, advantage of a town like Fairfield is the number of the type of people that run and, and get appointed and serve on these boards and commissions. You people all have your own lives. You don't get paid a cent for this work, and it's amazing to me. And it's really, I wouldn't have been here for 32 years if it wasn't true. The caliber of people that they get on these boards and commissions with their backgrounds and the bottom line to a person, their one motivation is for the rest of the town of Fairfield. And that's what makes, made my job great, made it worth 33 years. And all, the only advice I've ever given any commission member is and the two things. And I'll mention that now. Um, what could stifle, overdevelopment could stifle a great community. However, stifling development can also hurt a, a great community. Fairfield started with the four squares and has a great um, basis that it, it, it exists on. Just let it breathe. Let the town breathe. There's, it's a balancing act. You have to balance a, a lot of things, not just with public input, but just in general. But it's a great community. Just let it breathe. And you do that. You're a great commission. I just thank you for 33 years. Thanks a lot. Very good. Well, thanks very much. I personally thank you as well. Um, and we'll have all of us a lot more to say on Thursday night, I'm sure. Uh, and with that, I'll close the public hearing. I'll close the meeting.